three people in a room. By the following morning, one was dead. And the other two who were alive were arrested and taken to court. And as they were asking them, or as the court was, proceedings were going on, the case was beginning to find one of them guilty. And uh, they were going to make a pronouncement on him. You know what he asked? The one who's alive, he and I, we come from the same village. We've sworn on the Bible, sworn on the Koran, sworn on the sword, and yet I'm the one being found guilty. Please, I beg the, 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 the judge, etc., take us to the village we come from. We have a shrine over there, and let us go and, and swear on that shrine and see whether I am innocent or he is the, he is the culprit, whether I am the murderer or he is the culprit. That's all the question I asked these Catholic priests. They could not answer me because they know you're not going to swallow any poison, but they know that we don't fear that Bible, we don't fear that Koran, but when it comes to our shrine, that one we dare not joke with it, we'll go and tell the truth. The white man who brought the Bible into my country, your continent, the Muslim who brought whatever it is, he's the same person who has gone and invented the lie detector test, the chemical interrogation test. I would dare you to go and line up some of your finest policemen, some of your finest editors, some of your finest, what you call it, judges. Make any allegations against me, you included. Whatever questions you want to ask, take me through a chemical interrogation. I will be the one who will pass. I wonder how many of you will pass. You know something, Chief? If we can learn to be bold enough to, re to restore the value of truth in our society, then we will have justice. Without truth, we cannot get justice. We cannot get justice. And that's why we're suffering.